front begin to drift south and eastward. The central and eastern parts of Kansas will very probably be cloudy in the morning, and then western Kansas will begin to get increasing cloudiness by tomorrow afternoon. Today, however, a very, very pleasant reading. 73 up in the Goodland area, 72 at Garden City, 70 reported by Dodge City and Liberal, 72 two, two over by the good folks of Guam. Welcome back to episode three of the Wall and Witch podcast. Uh, it's felt like it's been ages since I've done my last one. But I think it came out last month and I said I'd do these monthly. I haven't really managed to do a lot of knitting this month. Uh, I've kind of been really hectic with everything else that's going on. Um, as you can imagine, it's coming up to Christmas time, so it's getting very busy. Um, I have been getting ready for another shop update, uh, so that's quite exciting because there's a lot of new things coming into the shop. Uh, so there'll be new colourways, new project bags and some new knitting notions which I haven't come out with before as well so that's kind of really cool. Um, and I've also really been sticking my head into getting the Bristol pop-up shop uh, website finished. Uh, I don't know if some of you might not have heard or anything but the UK has gone into another lockdown um, so we were hoping to open up the actual physical shop like next week in November and unfortunately we're not able to because all of the shops have basically shut. It's only essential shops open so basically all the supermarkets is getting raking in the money. Lovely. Um, so our little pop-up shop has had to postpone it until December. Hopefully we can open next month um, but saying that we have decided to try and push the website a lot more uh, so we are at the moment as I'm speaking we've got a soft launch going on so it's uh, just the other makers are going through testing out and making sure the website works so that then I can go in and try and fix anything that needs doing uh, before we properly launch so hopefully by the time this video comes out the pop-up shop will be open um, so if any of you want to support some local small independent makers or if you're from Bristol and you'd like to do some local shopping um, head to the bristolpopupshop.co.uk for a whole host of amazing things that's been made in Bristol. Um, so there's clothing, we've got some dungaree dresses and things on there from my friend at he Hello Cleo. Um, we have got some leather made goods by Claire's. I have got some knitting crochet and also some cross stitch kits on there as well. So there is a little craft corner and what else? Oh my god, there's so many like illustrators and things that's making like mugs and prints. It's amazing, you just have to look through it. Honestly, like you could lose your entire day just looking through all of the stuff on there. Um, so if you want to support some more independence this Christmas, please, please, please take a look. We have spent so many hours building the website. I'm really hoping that we can open it in December because otherwise that's majority of our time this year has just gone to waste. I mean, not what we want, but it, there's not a lot we can do if the, the UK has gone into lockdown again. Uh, so yeah, I've been super busy with all of those things. <sighs> they have taken up so much of my time. Um, uh, hopefully, <laughs> if everything goes well, 
that I take off a lot of the stress that's happening because there's a lot of stress and I can get back to actually knitting for myself uh, just grab a drink Uh, yeah, so I haven't really managed a lot of knitting for myself. I've kind of been plowing all my energy into getting the website done, but also my own stock because I realised that I have been underprepared for Christmas this year. Um, so in previous years, I've had a lot of illustration-based uh, stuff go into the, the pop-up shop and also like my Etsy shop and stuff. Uh, so it's been mainly stickers and notepads and notebooks and badges and pins and stuff like that uh, that I've sold. Uh, but this year was kind of my first year putting all my energy into Woolen Witch and all of my hand dyed yarns. And it's kind of fallen to the wayside. So I have spent the last few weeks uh, dyeing loads of things, talking with... Um, some laser cut people uh, in order to get some of my new notions done so I'm gonna show you really quickly what I've got going into the shop Um the update is happening on the 28th of November at about 9 a.m. so if you join my mailing list on my website you will get a little reminder the day before and on the morning that it happens so if you like me and can totally forget and then get too late to the party and miss out on the stuff that you're really looking forward to I would recommend joining my mailing list. Um, uh, I've got some new project bags, so I've been sewing these up the last few weeks. Uh, so I've got a few uh, sock sized project bags, uh, so my smaller sized ones in the previous fabrics, but I've also got some new fabric as well. Um, and I will show you my first one. So this is a little mushroom one. So this just a cute little forestry mushrooms um, and they're the same as my other ones so they've also got internal pockets as well and are fully lined and interfaced so you can uh, fold over and use them as a little sort of bucket bag as well um, I will have small and large ones of these ones and I have got some Christmas based fabric as well because they were too cute and I couldn't resist uh, <laughs> so I have got Ones with little cats and dogs saying like Merry Christmas and stuff on them. And then I paired it with some bright, bright coral pink as well because why the hell not? Um, so these ones I've got a large and small as well. And then I made myself one of these actually, so I will be keeping one of them. Um, and my cat has gotten hold of them, so it's covered in cat hair. I, I promised I will de-cat hair it before I sell any. Um, I've also got some cute little sanders. The camera is not doing it justice. It is a bright pink and it's so kitsch that I couldn't resist buying some. Um, so I will have uh, two small ones, so this size, uh, available on my shop. Just too good. I promised it last time and I completely forgot. Um, I have got some scarab beetle. I've re-dyed some more so my shop will have a restock of some of the older sort of favourite uh, colourways. But I also have scarab beetle in super chunky going in. Oh, it's too good. I want like a massive blanket out of this one. Like a big blanket scarf. I think it would be amazing. Um, but I've also got a few new colourways. Uh, I've got one that I can show you now. The rest are sort of drying or haven't actually been dyed yet. Um, so I have got this one. It doesn't have a name yet. So if you've got any suggestions, I would love to hear them because I, I don't know. I think I'm too tired at the moment. So names and just general creativity is sort of on the, just not happening <laughs> at the moment. Um, so I've got this one which is a really nice grey base, so if I will get out of the camera frame, there we go. So it's a really nice grey base and it's got bright pink and bright orange speckles going through it as well. Um, I have got one that's not schemed up so you can kind of see a bit better. I always find it easier to tell what 
something will look like once it's knitted when it's not skeined up. So you can see there's like pinks and oranges going through it. Just stuff from I've made lately. I've just I don't know, I feel like I've hit my rhythm and I know what's going on now, so I'm, I feel like everything's getting a little bit nicer. And the notions that I've got going in. Um, so some of you might have caught my last shop update and I had these in there for the weekend only of the shop update. Um, but my Christmas stitch markers are going back into the shop. So we've got the deer, my logo, some mountain regions and some mistletoe as well in there. Um, and you have the option with these ones of the bulb pins or clasp pins as well. Um, so my newest obsession is laser cutting. Um, I don't personally laser cut it but I get it designed and then I get it laser cut by a local company called Bespoke Laser. Um, they are over, I think they're over in Cardiff direction if I remember correctly. So they're just over the bridge from Bristol uh, and they have done an amazing job of uh, cutting my designs up and these are my newest mini knitting tools so I've got a selection of different designs um, you can buy one or you can buy all three and so this is one of them if I can get it to focus so we've got a knitting needle gauge and that goes from two millimeters up to 12 uh, they go up by half millimetres, I thought that was probably easiest to do. Uh, so they go up to 2.5, 3, 3.5 and up to 12. Um, so that's the first one. The second one I have got... <laughs> so the second one I've got is a gauge swatch sort of checker. So inside it's got a one inch square. Uh, so you can check your tension or you can check your if you your hitting gauge. I know a lot of the gauges I've been seeing lately have been like four inch, two inch gauges. Um, I thought this is just one that you can have in your little project bags as and when you need to. So you can get it out and double check while whilst you're knitting and things. Just for a rough, rough estimate rather than an exact one. Um, so, and I've got one more design. Um, but these have been hidden in my advent calendars uh, so I can't actually show you this design it won't be on the website if you're looking for a spoiler it you can probably find it on Bristol pop-up shop um, but if you buy all three designs you also get a free uh, linking ring um, just to hold them all together and these just pop open Uh, so you can slot them in and carry them or you can connect them to your project bag so you won't lose them at all as well. Uh, the link rings will also be available separately so if you've bought any mini tools or anything else uh, you can keep all your stuff together. Um, I've also found that um, you can actually link your stitch markers on here as well so you can have your tools and your stitch markers all together and you won't lose them in the bottom of your project bag like I always have to rummage and fish round into the bottom of them to try and find them when I need them. I am not an organised knitter I have to say. And then this has been kind of work in progress this one. Um, I will have a few available for Christmas uh, but bear in mind the design isn't quite finished yet. Uh, I still got to work some things out so this is my next one which is a little project pouch. Um, so in these pouches we'll have uh, sort of almost a beginner's starter set of uh, knitting notions and tools that you might need as a beginner knitter. Um, so the little project bags have been, um, they've got a vinyl print glitter design on the front, knitting, um, and I'm going to put my logo on the back. This is quite big, I'm going to make this smaller I think and just fit nicely in the corner. Um, and I was thinking about maybe having an added option so you can put your name on there as well as a custom bit. Uh, still working out the kinks of that one. Uh, but this design I think is going to stay on there. So this is just like black glitter. 
Uh, and then in the pouch, because it comes as a little set, I've got some uh, black measuring tape. You also have a little tapestry needle and then um, a sort of stitch marker project progress keeper. Um, this will just be a random design um, that I basically had as spares for my sets. So this you might get a rose, you might get a moss, you might get a deer, just any of the random ones. Um, also in the Notion Pants you will get some little black snips. So these will also be available separately as well because I've got a few left over. Um, and then this one is slightly different to what you normally get. Um, but I've got basically a mistake dropped stitch tool. Uh, it's what I personally use when I drop stitches. And it's a latch hook tool. Um, so my partner has dreadlocks and occasionally, actually every couple of weeks or so, I have to go through and tidy up his uh, roots and things. And I notice that these little latch hooks are so much easier to use and to fix a drop stitch than, than just trying to use a crochet tool. I find them a lot quicker. You can literally just dab in, pull it straight back out and not worry about catching any other stitches because it... Uh, you can close the latch hook part over it. Um, so they're different to what other people use. Uh, I thought it would be kind of cool to have something that I personally uh, use in there pretty regularly because I'm always dropping stitches. Um, so they're a sort of nice little personal touch for those ones in there. So that's basically everything in the Notions pouch uh, that will be coming out as well. Um, these, I've got to work out the price. I think they will probably be around sort of 20, 30 pound mark, um, but they will be a great little present for anyone that you know who is starting to knit or um, is completely disorganised and needs some somewhere to keep all of the little, little parts and stitch markers together as well. Um, I thought the pouches were big enough as well, so if you do have the tool, you can put it straight in there, or any other like knitting gauges and stuff as well. Um, you can use it as a pencil case if needs be. I think it's just, I think it's just a nice little added extra, perfect gift sort of thing. Um, I have a few other things that's going in the shop, uh, but like I said, they're not finished yet. It's not ready. I. I am just not done <laughs> with stuff. I'm so disorganised. So let's get back on to the knitting part of the knitting podcast. Um, so the other month I finished my first ever pair of socks. I have always been kind of worried about knitting socks before. They just seemed really overcomplicated. And uh, I managed to find a how-to video on how to sock knit um, with Magic Loop by the Crazy Sock Lady um, and I got on very well, I really enjoyed it unfortunately they didn't fit so I sent them to my sister um, but I really loved sock knitting and when I was asked if I would be interested in test knitting another pair of socks I kind of jumped at the chance so these are by the lovely Dimmy and they are called the Fairy Gathering Socks um, if my camera decides to focus, there we go. Uh, so they've got this really lovely texture running um, around the cuff and on the top part of the foot as well. Um, and it's such a Moorish little texture and I really enjoyed this pattern. It's really, it's super simple to understand as well. Um, it uses a German short row heel as well, which is the first time I've, I've done that. German short rows, never, no clue. But uh, in the pattern, she links to some really great uh, tutorials on how to do it as well, which is so handy. Um, I just really loved this pattern. I This is just the first sock I haven't cast on the second one. But yeah, so I would really recommend this sock pattern. Uh, the sock fix really nice. Um, Woohoo, right? <laughs> like the last one didn't fit, but this one does. Um, the German short row was really easy, 
really really moorish texture pattern to like knit and it just looks really pretty as well um it worked really well with my uh speckled yarn so this yarn was from the indie yarn club who used to be harbour crochet um but it seems to just pick up the speckles really nicely and works with the texture as well um so i would really recommend this pattern uh so that was my sort of half finished object i guess you'd say um my i'm still i'm still knitting um the Tiroldigo shawl by Caitlin Hunter as well. Um, I've gotten further on it. I have gotten further on it. Uh, I'm not sure where I was in the last podcast. Didn't really keep track of what was going on. Um, but I am, I think I'm about halfway through the lace work. So I think it's about 90 stitches worth of lace work in the middle of the shawl and I'm up to about 55 so just over halfway um, on the lace on this one um, so that is kind of the back I guess with the pearl stitches let's go to the front there you go um, so is that one uh, I want to say I was still on the striped part on the last um, podcast um, so bit of, there's a bit of colour work, there's a bit of lace work, there's some striping, I believe after the lace work it goes into just a plain uh, solid colour. Um, so this is using my personal yarn that I've dyed, so this is Karen M, so you're almost getting um, stripes almost within that one as well which is quite nice. Um, so the red is Karen M, uh, the darker purple stripes are Ruby Falls and then the sort of paler speckled yarn is uh, Be My Valentine, um, all available in my shop. Um, but I'm really enjoying this, I am enjoying it. Uh, like I said, I've been like rushed off my feet with everything else, so unfortunately I haven't been able to spend a lot of time knitting. Um, I've started kind of pigeonholing myself an hour in the afternoon, uh, sort of evening time before uh, and my partner gets home uh, just so I can kind of calm down for the evening um, after a very hectic day and just sit in it and watch TV shows. It's, at the moment it's watching West Wing, re-watching West Wing because it's just such a good show and with a whole thing with the American elections I got really like oh I need to watch a political drama again um and then with I noticed that West Wing was on 4OD so I started watching that now yeah, mm, I don't know I've just I'm overly aware lately that I've been uh very stressed and taken on way too much at the moment so I also um along with dyeing yarn and everything and doing the pop-up shop I also work like 30 hours a week so part-time but it's still it's a lot of hours um, and then I come straight home and I sit and I do the work for the, the other online shops plural <laughs> um, uh, I'll do that and and then Ant comes home and I see him for like an hour and then I've got to go to bed because my day job starts at three o'clock in the morning um, I'm just overly aware that at the moment I don't have a lot of time to myself so I've been trying to give myself at least an hour in the evenings and try to chill out and breathe. Uh, I'm hoping, I'm hoping once the pop-up shop and things are open and the shop update's done I can kind of relax um, until next year to be honest. Uh, especially with things at the moment I mean like my base level anxiety is fairly high generally and then we've got the pandemic as well um going on that's just tightened it slightly and uh the fact that the UK is in the lockdown so normal life isn't really happening as well so it's hard to find the time 
to chill out like you're literally you're going uh to work if you can go to work you're spending that the, all those hours there you're coming home you can't even go out to a coffee shop or to the library or to the bookshop you're kind of stuck at work or stuck at home or stuck both and there's no in between at the moment and I think we all need to take the time to realize when we're coming to a burnout or or when it's all getting too much and we need to try and chill out a bit and I'm I'm learning how to deal but it's it's tough yeah <laughs> it's definitely tough uh, I am basically just looking forward to Christmas time and and um, everything being open and sort of my half of the stuff kind of done um, or at least going back to a slower pace Christmas is busy wherever basically especially if you work in retail or doing mail order and stuff as well uh, yeah just very busy um, I, I need to get back to to reading I that, that things that I always found really relaxing alongside knitting not at the same time I can't read and knit that doesn't quite work I know it does for some people it doesn't work for me unless I'm uh, listening to an audiobook then it's knitting and kind of reading but not really um <laughs> but uh, I want to actually sit down and spend some time actually reading a book uh, I used to love it before I got into knitting uh, I would spend entire days reading and it was it was lush it was amazing um but I'm struggling to even find the time to sit down to read like half a chapter at the moment so I've got like five books on the go uh, I've always had a few books on the go but I think it's because I'm not able to spend enough time really getting into a story that I'm flicking between lots to try and work out uh, like to try and get sucked into a story so I'm spending loads of time across all of them that makes no sense but that's the way my brain is working at the moment uh, so the main book that I've tried to funnel into is, is uh, The Familiars by Stacey Hall um, I take so I've got it on hardback book I always take the dust jackets off when I'm reading them because I find otherwise I end up ripping the covers and stuff so this is uh, The Familiars by Stacey Hall um, it's a very pretty spine of the book as well so I'm kind of tempted just to take the paper off and just leave it off because um, it looks really pretty on my shelf uh, so that's one of the main books that I've been reading I'm only a few chapters into it I'm kind of intrigued by the story it's not like oh my gosh I'm so excited by this and it's really exciting and interesting it's kind of like slow going which is kind of nice in a way especially because my life currently has just been like ah! so it's it's like a sort of chill out afterwards almost is breathing so that's the books that I've actually been like physically reading um audiobook wise uh I have downloaded the Amanda Palmer uh the art of asking recently as well um and I've already cried at it twice I think I I've listened to a couple chapters of it and her story and the way she tells the story and um, her life and the way she talks about her family and friends and stuff it's so touching and it I don't know it it really gets me going I've, it's just it's really inspiring and if you haven't um, seen Amanda Palmer or listened to any of her music um, I would recommend it she is an amazing songwriter um, it's not to everyone's taste and I get that but I think if you look at the song within it and the story she tells with them it it sort of hits home very hard for me seeing the other side of it as well and her actually talking about um 
the life and, and her asking for help from people as well is just really interesting. Um, if you're not entirely sure whether you want to get the book or or listen to her music or anything she's done a TED talk as well on the art of asking um, which is on YouTube as well so I will put a link in the description because it's so worth a watch and a listen. So that's actually pretty much everything I think for the uh, podcast today. Um, like I said I've been way too hectic and there's so much stuff going on that I haven't managed to actually get a lot done at the same time it's very weird I can't work it out like uh, I well I don't know it's just just the way life goes I think sometimes um so yeah shop update is happening on the 28th so Saturday the 28th of November at 9am uh so that is uh UK time um for any of you that is across the world that want to know um so it's literally two weeks I think from today so the day of filming if you are interested thank you very much uh, if you sign up for my mailing list you will get a reminder of uh, the shop update. Um, I've also been writing a few more blog posts and things lately. Uh, there will be a few gift guides for knitters and things going up over the next few weeks. Oh my god I completely forgot. Oh my god I forgot. I need to write, I need to write notes before I do this podcast. Uh, I also am starting a new subscription box so every month you will be able to get a stitch marker and some yarn or if you want just the stitch marker it will be I've got two different themes going into the shop so I will have a supernatural based themed one for the year so that'll be things like Dracula, witches, uh, which is cauldrons, tarot, there'll be lots of different designs for that um, and then the other one is a Nautilus themed one. So that one will be things like the whole old sailors stuff, anchors, ships, seashells, just anything that's to do with the sort of nautical based stuff as well. Um, I'm really looking forward to them. Uh, it, it, I love mystery boxes. I am a huge sucker for a subscription box. Uh, it's like a monthly treat for yourself and I am all about treating myself all the time. It's a really customizable uh, subscription box which is really cool. So take a look at that on my website, that will be available on the shop update as well. I think that's pretty much it for the podcast today. Um, I really, really should write notes. I, I start writing them and then I get distracted and then I forget about them and then I sit down to do the video and I forget to look at them as well. I don't know. I will see you in the next podcast, I guess, which will be in December. Hopefully, I will be able to do a bit of a shop tour of the pop-up shop for you. I think that'd be really cool for me to share that with you. It's a massive part of my life at the moment, so why not share it with you guys as well? Um, so if you want to see that, don't forget to uh, subscribe to my YouTube channel. Um, and if you hit that like button, thank you very much. Have a good day, guys. Bye.